Steak and Ale was an American chain of casual dining restaurants that opened in 1966 and went bankrupt in 2008. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified of my latest videos. Please hit that like button and leave a suggestion or a comment. You might see that in a future video. Thanks for watching and now back to a regular scheduled program. For those who have other plans for dinner, Steak and Ale offers our sincere apologies for this commercial. you could change your plans. Steak and Ale in 1966 in Dallas, Texas. Brinker had a long and an illustrious history in the restaurant business. He began his career in 1957 working for the Jack in the Box fast food chain, which then had just seven outlets. Nine years later, Brinker left the greatly expanded Jack in the Box operation to found Steak and Ale. The chain, with its dimly lit Tudor style decorated dining rooms, billed itself as an offering as an upscale steak experience at lower prices. It was seen as a model for the casual dining steakhouse chain, and many executives there went on to run other large chains. Steak and Ale was an informal, full-service restaurant chain with a menu that emphasized inexpensive steak dinners and friendly service. Responsible for introducing the salad bar, an innovation which soon swept the restaurant industry, this new casual dining concept became a favorite among the generation of baby boomers. By the 1970s, Brinker's nearly 200 restaurants included Steak and Ale and Bennigan's Chains. It was overseen by his SNA Restaurant Corporation. It remained an independent chain until 1976, good year, when Pillsbury purchased it and folded it into its restaurant group with Burger King, Bennigan's, Poppin' Fresh Pies, and other stores. At the time, the company had 113 locations of Steak and Ale and Jolly Ox, the name Steak and Ale used in markets that did not allow a reference to liquor in the restaurant name. If you grew up in the 70s or 80s, you may remember that Steak and Ale was known for its signature herb roasted prime rib, Kensington Club, New York Strip, Filet Mignon, Hawaiian chicken, spicy grilled chicken pasta. It also featured warm honey wheat brown bread and a bountiful salad bar with chilled salad plates. All this talk is making me hungry. The restaurant featured an unlimited salad bar or a choice of soup with most of its entrees on the dinner menu. It also featured free drink refills and a honey wheat bread. Steak and Ale also offered a lunch menu with many items for $6.99. In 1982, Pillsbury spun off the company and Bennigan's into the independent SNA Restaurant Corporation. Steak and Ale grew as one of the first chain dinner houses to its height in the late 1980s with 280 locations. In 1988, Metro Media purchased the company. During this period, competition that the brand helped inspire eroded its market presence. In 1993, the company was merged with the Metro Media Steakhouse chains Bonanza and Ponderosa, and all three chains were operated under the SNA Restaurant Group brand. During the mid-1990s, in an attempt to revitalize lagging sales, the early evening menu was introduced. In addition to the lower prices, all of the early evening fares included a free beverage, 
and a free dessert. Some of the complimentary dessert selections were strawberry sundown cake, twilight triple fudge cake, and spice cake. The restaurant also featured wine samples for only 25 cents. Increased competition, aging customer base, and changing tastes would eventually cause the fall of this once great restaurant chain. The SNA Restaurant Corporation bankruptcy in July of 2008 affected the Bennigan's restaurant chain, also owned by that company. All of the company-owned stores closed the same day as Steak and Ale Restaurant. The franchised Bennigan's locations remained open. The Metro Media Company also owned the Ponderosa and Bonanza Steakhouse change, which were not affected by the bankruptcy filing. They operated by a different subsidiary of the company. There have been talks to revitalize the brand, but so far nothing has come out of it. So what are your favorite memories of this restaurant? Leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you just watched my video, thanks for watching. Hit that like button and please subscribe to Eric C. Productions.